Hello and welcome to Ogmore YC Church's Reading the Bible Together. My name is Dom, I'm the pastor of the church. Welcome. I hope that you are blessed as we read through the books of Jeremiah and Lamentations throughout the month, month of August. We need to get cracking because there is a lot to get through. I do apologise. The audio is probably not as good as usual and it's usually not that great in the first place. But as you can see, I'm in a different setting with... Uh, not a good audio device recording. Right, we ought to pray and then we're going to get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We confess our sin before you, trusting that you cleanse us. Please show us Jesus, our Saviour, now as we look into your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So this is Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests at Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, and through the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, down to the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile. So if you're not too sure of the timeline of the Bible, you have the creation and then you have the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Joseph. And then they get they go to Egypt and then you have the story of the Exodus. Then you have the people of God wandering through the wilderness, being brought to the promised land. And then you have the time of the judges. And then finally, the God's dynasty, uh, God's appointed kings are put in place and then soon after that the kingdom is split into two. You have the northern tribes of Israel, you have the southern tribes of Benjamin, Judah and the Levites and they're kind of separate. In the north uh, there's only bad kings. Uh, in the south there's mainly bad kings but some good kings. Uh, Israel goes into exile earlier than Judah and Jerusalem. But this is all the way down the line, um, the time of the kings, after the split of the kingdom. And Jeremiah is ministering God's word to God's people just before the exile. And then he lives through it. He sees what he warns the people of come to fruition. Right. Verse four. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. And that could sum up the book of Jeremiah quite well. Tearing down and building up. Tearing down false hopes and preaching judgment, but all the while instilling eternal hope in the gospel. Verse 11, the word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling, I answered. It is tilting toward us from the north. The Lord said to me, from the north disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. Their kings will come and set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all her surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. I'll pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods and in worshipping what their hands have made. Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them. For I will terrify you before them. Today I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests and the people of the land. They will fight against you, 
but will not overcome you, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Jeremiah had an extraordinary hard calling. He was called to go and preach to a people that just would not listen. And that's why he was given this special measure of grace, this ability to be like a fortified city. Because it felt like he was banging his head against a brick wall. The message just did not get through. Because we'll see that the Lord is pleading with his people to turn and to be saved through Jeremiah. But they just will not. But Jeremiah shows exemplary perseverance and dedication to the mission that the Lord called him to. No matter how hard, no matter how discouraging. Chapter 2. Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you loved me and followed me through the wilderness, through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who devoured her were held guilty and disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, you descendants of Jacob, all you clans of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your ancestors find in me, that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and ravines, a land of drought and utter darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives? I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and rich produce. You came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detestable. The priests did not ask, where is the Lord? Those who deal with the Lord did not know me. The leaders rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, following worthless idols. Therefore, I bring charges against you again, declares the Lord. I will bring charges against your children's children. Cross over to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Keda and observe closely. See if there has ever been anything like this. Has a nation ever changed its gods? Yet they are not gods at all. My people, but my people, have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. Be appalled at this, you heavens, and shudder with great horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Is Israel a servant, a slave by birth? Why then has he become plunder? Lions have roared, they have growled at him, they have laid waste his land, his towns are burned and deserted. Also the men, men of Memphis and Tapenes have cracked your skull. Have you not brought this on yourselves by forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in the way? Now, why go to Egypt to drink water from the Nile? And why go to Assyria to drink water from the Euphrates? Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realise how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Long ago, you broke off your yoke and tore off your bonds. You said, I will not serve you. Indeed, on every high hill and under every spreading tree, you lay down as a prostitute. I had planted you like a choice vine of sound and reliable stock. How then did you turn against me into a corrupt wild vine? Although you wash yourself with soap and use an abundance of cleansing powder, the stain of your guilt is still before me, declares the Sovereign Lord. How can you say, I'm not defiled, I have not run after the Baals? See how you behaved in the valley. Consider what you have done. You are a swift she-cow, running here and there, a wild donkey accustomed to the desert, sniffing the wind in her craving, in her heat. Who can restrain her? Any males that pursue her need not, not tire themselves. At mating time they'll find her. Do not run until your feet are bare and your throat is dry. But you said, it's no use. I love foreign gods and I must go after them. 
As a thief is disgraced when he is caught, so the people of Israel are disgraced. They, their kings and their officials, their priests and their prophets, they say to wood, you are my father, and to stone, you gave me birth. They have turned their backs to me and not their faces. Yet, when they are in trouble, they say, come and save us. Where then are the gods you've made for yourselves? Let them come, if they can, save you when you are in trouble. For you, Judah, have as many gods of you as you have towns. Why do you bring charges against me? You have all rebelled against me, declares the Lord. In vain I punished your people. They did not respond to correction. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a ravenous lion. You of this generation consider the word of the Lord. Have I been a desert to Israel? Or a land of great darkness? Why do my people say, we are free to roam, we will come to you no more? Does a young woman forget her jewellery, a bride her wedding ornaments? Yet my people have forgotten me, days without number. How skilled you are at pursuing love. Even the worst of women can learn from your ways. In your clothes is found the lifeblood of the innocent poor, though you did not catch them breaking in. Yet in spite of all this, you say, I am innocent, he is not angry with me. But I will pass judgment on you because you say, I have not sinned. Why do you go about so much changing your ways? You will be disappointed by Egypt, as you were by Assyria. You will also leave that place with your hands on your head, for the Lord has rejected those you trust. You will not be helped by them. If a man divorces his wife, and she leaves him and marries another man, should he return to her again? Would not the land be completely defiled? But you have lived as a prostitute with many lovers. Would you now return to me, declares the Lord? Look up to the barren heights and see, is there any place where you have not been ravished? By the roadside you sit waiting, you sat waiting for lovers, sat like a nomad in the desert. You have defiled the land with your prostitution and wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withheld and no spring rains have fallen. Yet you have the brazen look of a prostitute, you refuse to blush with shame. Have you not just called to me? My father, my friend from my youth, will you always be angry? Will your wrath continue forever? This is how you talk, but you do all the evil you can. During the reign of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, Have you seen what faithless Israel have, has done? She has gone up on every high hill and under every spreading tree and has committed adultery there. I thought that after she had done all this, she would return to me, but she did not. And her unfaithful sister Judah saw it. I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. Yet I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. Because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her, she defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. In spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense, declares the Lord. The Lord said to me, Faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Judah. Go proclaim this message toward the north. Return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will frown on you no longer, for I am faithful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against the Lord your God. You have scattered your favours to foreign gods under every spreading tree and have not obeyed me, declares the Lord. Return, faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband. I will choose you, one from a town and two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. In those days when your numbers have increased greatly in the land, declares the Lord, people will no longer say, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It will never enter their minds or be remembered. It will not be missed, nor will another one be made. At that time they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, 
and all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honour the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. In those days the people of Judah will join the people of Israel, and together they will come from a northern land to the land I gave your ancestors as an inheritance. I myself said, How gladly would I treat you like my children, and give you a pleasant land, the most beautiful inheritance of any nation. I thought you would call me father, and not turn away from following me. But like a woman unfaithful to her husband, so you, Israel, have been unfaithful to me, declares the Lord. A cry is heard on the barren heights, the weeping and pleading of the people of Israel, because they have perverted their ways and have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, faithless people, I will cure you of backsliding. Yes, we will come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains is a deception. Surely in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. From our youth, shameful gods have consumed the fruits of our ancestors' labour, their flocks and herds, their sons and daughters. Let us lie down in our shame. Let our disgrace cover us. We have sinned against the Lord our God, both we and our ancestors, from our youth till this day. We have not obeyed the Lord our God. If you, Israel, will return to me, then return to me, declares the Lord. If you put your detestable idols out of my sight and no longer go astray, and if and if in a truthful, just and righteous way you swear as surely as the Lord lives, then the nations will invoke blessings by him, and in him they will boast. This is what the Lord says to the people of Judah and to Jerusalem. Break up your unploughed ground, and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Circumcise your hearts, you people of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, or my wrath will flare up and burn like fire because of the evil you have done, Burn with no one to quench it. Announce in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, Sound the trumpet throughout the land. Cry aloud and say, Gather together, let us flee to the fortified cities. Raise the signal to go to Zion. Flee for safety without delay, for I am bringing disaster from the north, even terrible destruction. A lion has come out of his lair. A destroyer of nations has set out. He has left his place to lay waste your land. Your towns will lie in ruins without inhabitant. So put on sackcloth, lament and wail for the fierce anger of the Lord has not turned away from us. In that day, declares the Lord, the king and the officials will lose heart. The priests will be horrified and the prophets will be appalled. Then I said, Alas, sovereign Lord, how completely you have deceived this people in Jerusalem by saying you will have peace. When the sword is at our throats, at that time this people and Jerusalem will be told, a scorching wind from the barren heights in the desert blows toward my people, but not to winnow or cleanse. A wind too strong for that comes from me. Now I pronounce my judgments against them. Look, he advances like the clouds. His chariots come like a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, we are ruined. Jerusalem, wash the evil from your heart and be saved. How long will you harbour wicked thoughts? A voice is announcing from Dan, proclaiming disaster from the hills of Ephraim. Tell this to the nations, proclaim concerning Jerusalem. A besieging army is coming from a distant land, raising a war cry against the cities of Judah. They surround her like men guarding a field, because she has rebelled against me declares the Lord. Your own conduct and actions have brought this on you. This is your punishment. How bitter it is. How it pierces to the heart. Oh, my anguish, my anguish. I writhe in pain. Oh, the agony of my heart. My heart pounds within me. I cannot keep silent. For I have heard the sound of the trumpet. I have heard the battle cry. Disaster follows disaster. The whole land lies in ruins. In an instant my tents are destroyed, my shelter in a moment. How long must I see the battle standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? My people are fools, they do not know me. 
They are senseless children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil. They do not know how to do good. I looked at the earth and it was formless and empty, and at the heavens and their light was gone. I looked at the mountains and they were quaking. All the hills were swaying. I looked and there were no people. Every bird in the sky had flown away. I looked and the fruitful land was a desert. All its towns lay in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. This is what the Lord says. The whole land will be ruined, though I will not destroy it completely. Therefore the earth will mourn and the heavens above grow dark because I have spoken and will not relent. I have decided and will not turn back. At the sound of the horsemen and archers, every town takes to flight. Some go into the thickets, some climb up on, among the rocks. All the towns are deserted. No one lives in them. What are you doing, you, devast you devastated one? Why dress yourself in scarlet and put on jewels of gold? Why highlight your eyes with makeup? You adorn yourself in vain. Your lovers despise you. They want to kill you. I hear a cry as of a woman in labour, a groan as of one bearing her first child, the cry of daughter Zion gasping for breath, stretching out her hands and saying, Alas, I'm fainting. My life is given over to murderers. Go up and down the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and consider. Search through her squares. If you can find but one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this city. Although they say, as surely as the Lord lives, still they are swearing falsely. Lord, do not your eyes look for truth? You struck them, but they felt no pain. You crushed them, but they refused correction. They made their faces harder than stone and refused to repent. I thought, these are only the poor. They are foolish, for they do not know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. So I will go to the leaders and speak to them. Surely they know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. But with one accord, they too had broken off the yoke and torn off the bonds. Therefore a lion from the forest will attack them. A wolf from the desert will ravage them. A leopard will lie in wait near their towns to tear to pieces any who venture out. For their rebellion is great and their backslidings many. Why should I forgive you? Your children have forsaken me and sworn by gods that are not gods. I supplied all their needs, yet they committed adultery and thronged to the houses of prostitutes. They are well-fed, lusty stallions, each neighing for another man's wife. Should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord? Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? Go throughout her vineyards and ravage them, but do not destroy them completely. Strip off her branches, for these people do not belong to the Lord. The people of Israel and the people of Judah have been utterly unfaithful to me, declares the Lord. They have lied about the Lord. They said, he will do nothing. No harm will come to us. We will never see sword or famine. The prophets are but wind and the word is not in them. So let what they say be done to them. Therefore, this is what the Lord God Almighty says. Because the people have spoken these words, I will make my words in your mouth a fire, and these people the wood it consumes. People of Israel, declares the Lord, I am bringing a distant nation against you, an ancient and enduring nation, a people whose language you do not know, whose speech you do not understand. Their quivers are like an open grave. All of them are mighty warriors. They will devour your harvests and food, devour your sons and daughters. They will devour your flocks and herds, devour your vines and fig trees. With the sword they will destroy the fortified cities in which you trust. Yet even in those days, declares the Lord, I will not destroy you completely. And when the people ask, why has the Lord our God done all this to us? You will tell them. As you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your own land, so now you will serve foreigners in a land not your own. Announce this to the descendants of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people, who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Should you not fear me, declares the Lord? Should you not tremble in my presence? 
I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. But these people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say to themselves, let us fear the Lord our God who gives autumn and spring rains and season, who assures us of the regular weeks of harvest. Your wrongdoings have kept these away. Your sins have deprived you of good. Among my people are the wicked who lie in wait like men who snare birds and like those who set traps to catch people. Like cages full of birds, their houses are full of deceit. They have become rich and powerful and have grown fat and sleek. Their evil deeds have no limit. They do not seek justice. They do not promote the case of the fatherless. They do not defend the, case, the just cause of the poor. Should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? A horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy lies. The priests rule by their own authority, and my people love it this way. But what will you do in the end? Flee for safety, people of Benjamin. Flee from Jerusalem. Sound the trumpet in Tekoa. Raise the signal over Beth Hakarem. For disaster looms out of the north, even terrible destruction. I will destroy daughter Zion, so beautiful and delicate. Shepherds with their flocks will come against her. They will pitch their tents around her, each tending his own portion. Prepare for battle against her. Arise, let us attack at noon. But alas, the daylight is fading and the shadows of evening grow long. So arise, let us attack at night and destroy her fortresses. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Cut down the trees and build siege ramps against Jerusalem. This city must be punished. It is filled with oppression. As a well pours out its water, so she pours out her wickedness. Violence and destruction resound in her. Her sickness and wounds are ever before me. Take warning, Jerusalem, or I will turn away from you and make your land desolate so no one can live in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Let them glean the remnant of Israel as thoroughly as a vine. Pass your hand over the branches again like one gathering grapes. To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed. They cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. But I am full of the wrath of the Lord and I cannot hold it in. Pour it out on the children in the street and on the young men gathered together. Both husband and wife will be caught in it and the old those weighed down with years. The houses will be turned over to others together with their fields and their wives. When I stretch out my hand against those who live in the land, declares the Lord. From the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain. Prophets and priests alike all practice deceit. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of their detestable conduct? No, they have no shame at all. They do not even know how to blush, so they will fall among the fallen. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. I appointed watchmen over you and said, listen to the sound of the trumpet, but you said, we will not listen. Therefore hear, you nations, you who are witnesses, observe what will happen to them. Hear, you earth, I am bringing disaster on this people, the fruit of their schemes because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. What do I care about incense from Sheba or sweet calamus from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Your sacrifices do not please me. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will put obstacles before this people. Parents and children alike will stumble over them. Neighbours and friends will perish. This is what the Lord says. Look, an army is coming from the land of the north. A great nation is being stirred up from the ends of the earth. They are armed with bow and spear. They are cruel and show no mercy. 
They sound like the roaring sea as they ride on their horses. They come like men in battle formation to attack you, daughter Zion. We have heard reports about them, and our hands hang limp. Anguish has gripped us, pain like that of a woman in labour. Do not go out to the fields or walk on the roads, for the enemy has a sword and there is terror on every side. Put on sackcloth, my people, and roll in ashes, mourn with bitter wailing, as for an only son, for suddenly the destroyer will come upon us. I have made you a tester of metals, and my people the ore, that you may observe and test their ways. They are all hardened rebels going about to slander. They are bronze and iron, they all act corruptly. The bellows blow fiercely to burn away the lead with fire, but the refining goes on in vain. The wicked are not purged out. They are called rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. This is what the this is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, If you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your ancestors forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal and follow other gods you have not known, and then... Come and stand before me in this house, which bears my name, and say, We are safe, safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house, which bears my name, become a den of robbers to you? But I've been watching, declares the Lord. Go now to the place in Shiloh where I first made a dwelling for my name, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people, Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called to you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to Shiloh, I will now do to the house that bears my name, the temple you trust in, the place I gave you and your ancestors. I will thrust you from my presence, just as I did all your fellow Israelites, the people of Ephraim. So do not pray for this people, nor offer any plea or petition for them. Do not plead with me, for I will not listen to you. Do you not see what they are doing in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, the fathers light the fire, and the women knead the dough and make cakes to offer to the Queen of Heaven. They pour out drink offerings to other gods to arouse my anger. But am I the one they are provoking? declares the Lord. Are they not rather harming themselves for their own shame? Therefore this is what the Sovereign Lord says. My anger and my wrath will be poured out on this place, on man and beast, on the trees of the field and on the crops of your land, and it will burn and not be quenched. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Go ahead, add your burnt offerings to your other sacrifices and eat the meat yourselves. For when I brought your ancestors out of Egypt and spoke to them, I did not just give them commands about burnt offerings and sacrifices, but I gave them this command. Obey me and I will be your God and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I command you, that it may go well with you. But they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubborn inclinations of their evil hearts. They went backward and not forward. From the time your ancestors left Egypt up till now, day after day, again and again, I sent you, my servants, the prophets. But they did not listen to me or pay attention. They were stiff-necked and did more evil than their ancestors. 
When you tell them all this, they will not listen to you. When you call to them, they will not answer. Therefore, say to them, This is the nation that has not obeyed the Lord, its God, or responded to correction. Truth has perished. It has vanished from their lips. Cut off your hair and throw it away. Take up a lament on the barren heights, for the Lord has rejected and abandoned this generation that is under his wrath. The people of Judah have done evil in my eyes, declares the Lord. They have set up their detestable idols in the house that bears my name and have defiled it. They have built the high places of Topheth in the valley of Ben-Hinnon to burn their sons and daughters in the fire, something I did not command, nor did it enter my mind. So beware, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people no longer call it Topheth or the valley of Ben-Hinnom, but the valley of Slaughter, for they will bury the dead in Topheth until there is no more room. Then the carcasses of this people will become food for the birds and the wild animals, and there will be no one to frighten them away. I'll bring an end to the sounds of joy and gladness and to the voices of bride and bridegroom in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. For the land will become desolate. God bless. See you again soon.